this is Clara, but you can call me mother and welcome back to our Alien Day special. Now, right now I've got a special guest with me, James Chapman, who I met through the Alien Collectors Forum on Facebook. And I guess it, this is kind of a unique interview because I was actually able to go to James's house and have a look at his collection and, and completely geek out over Alien. Um, but I, I won't go too much into it now I'll I'll introduce James so James welcome onto the show thank you very much for having me Clara <laughs> so um could you please explain to us what your first exposure was to to alien yeah it's one of those things I, I stumbled across alien and aliens by accident I think I was around about 13 at the time so, and at this particular point in time, I was really starting to get into movies a hell of a lot. You know, it was my first year of high school and meeting new people and with different interests. And the first Alien film was on very late at night on free-to-air television. I'd never heard of it, never seen it. And it's a funny thing because I do have a memory of watching it for the first time and, and I was waiting for something to happen. And I was, you know, being a, a young, impatient teenager, I was probably almost ready to turn the movie off at some point because I thought, my God, does this just go on and on and on without anything happening? And then, of course, there was the chest burst scene. And that was like a moment where I just sank into my seat and just, I think, my jaw dropped. And I thought, right, we're not going to be turning off here. So uh, from that moment on, having seen the first movie, I was hooked and then someone told me that there was a second movie made. And uh, I made all efforts to go out and, and see that. And I think the funny thing happened um, probably only a couple of months after I saw the second movie. I was in a shop at, uh, I think from memory it was Knox, uh, Knox City. And there's a game shop back then. And they actually had Aliens, the board game. And it was the leading edge games. Uh, in a, you know, it was in a, in a box and everything. And it was probably cost a small fortune back then. And I decided I had to have it. So I went back and started saving for that. So that's just a little bit of an intro. It oh, was wow. An accidental discovery. That's really great. <laughs> so um, what kind of started you on the whole path to um, from being just a regular fan to start collecting? Like what was your first piece that kind of got you addicted to getting into it you know after i finally bought the leading edge game the board game i think i i got the books not long after that i didn't really probably start collecting until i was about 20 i mean i knew i loved alien and aliens but i think it was more so that i started really buying a lot of stuff off you know there's ebay and there's all these other sites that come up and because of the ability to share information uh, globally the, uh, suddenly you get this, uh, all of this information comes in as to what's available. And, and there's all these items that you never knew were available. And you have all that information and you think suddenly, gee, I would love to get that. And it just starts with one or two items and it starts to build and build and build. And I think uh, initially I probably never really intended to, to be a collector. It was just something that happened over time. Mm, I can totally relate to that as well. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have called myself a collector two years ago, um, but now <laughs> I've, I've spent probably way too much money on it. You hooked. <laughs> yeah, you that's hooked. right. Now, um, as as us as Aussies, um, getting alien stuff is is pretty hard. What what has Alien Day been for you as as a collector the past couple of years? Uh it's an eye opener because there's so many pieces. Um, there's a lot of different pieces that we really don't see here uh, commercially in Australia. There's a lot of things that never really made it down here. And then and, and, and it's like well, some of the ones that I showed you, like that, uh, you know, the, the egg, the, the storage box. There were, there's just things, really unique pieces and, um, and the watch. Oh, you know, yeah. I bought from Japan. There's a whole heap of things and... Um, and to get them, you know, it's a, it is a funny thing. It, collecting is a very personal experience because you decide for yourself, you end up with this watch list of items that you, you're watching and you build up a, a big list of things that you want. 
you decide what you're prepared to pay for these items and then you've got to try and find a way to ship them and you're dealing with sellers who sometimes don't want to post to Australia. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, know, I know it that. A lot. It happens a lot. So it's, um, it's, it's multifaceted, multifaceted. It's very uh, interesting being here and then trying to buy items from Japan or the United States or Germany and some even from the UK. I've had items from right around the world. Now, are there any particular coveted pieces which you went the extra mile for to get? <laughs> I think I might have uh, elaborated a little bit on the, the story with my airsoft pulse rifle. And that was a real, <laughs> it's a bit of a desperado act because, you know, obviously there's a lot of laws with regards to the importation of imitation firearms and things in this country. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I say we're over the top, but we, a lot of people around the world say we probably have really good laws with regard to this sort of thing. But as a collector, it makes it very, very hard. So uh, I did go all out on that airsoft pulse rifle because, you know, I had to have it shipped from one side of America to the other. And then through my Australia Post Shopmate account, I had to get it sent out here. And I made up a bit of a, can we say bullshit on here? <laughs> Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I made up a bullshit flyer uh, calling it. I said, thank you for buying the aliens water pistol. So I made it out like this thing was a water pistol and not an airsoft gun at all. And I thought if anyone uh, opens it and looks at this thing and they pick up this flyer, they're going to say, okay, it's a water pistol. Put it back. Let him have it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, it's amazing uh, what lengths we go to to do this stuff. Hey. <laughs> Well, and, and then I, I started up, it was a, a Wix website, just a basic Wix website uh, where I started up this fictitious theatre group because one of the things that you can do if you are a theatre group, you can actually apply to be able to import uh, replica things to have in plays and that kind of thing. So there's, they do make exceptions to the rules and I just, I wanted to cover my bases for everything. Oh, that's amazing. It's it's so good that you can like kind of like achieve that by just like a, a, just a little bit of a ruse. I mean, like we do our best to, to get what we want out of um, the collecting side. I know with the Prometheus binders just recently, I had to make up an invoice to have them shipped to me, <laughs> even though I, I bought them le legitimately and then had them shipped to my shopmate account. It was the same thing. They just needed lots of paperwork. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not it, can, quite. it can be the luck of the draw. It really can be the luck of the draw because, uh, you know, sometimes you can be pulled up on, on items and, and a lot of the times you, you won't. But uh, I've imported two other items now for another guy who's over in Western Australia. And the most recent one, it's actually this week, it's actually happening this week, is the Hollywood Collectibles Group uh, M240 incinerator unit, the flamethrower mm -hmm. from Aliens. And he didn't want to do it because he's terrified of it being seized by customs. Uh, so I spoke to Hollywood Collectibles about it and they assured me that they've actually, they have exported those items out to Australia without any problems. But I did the same thing again as I did with my Pulse Rifle. I got the Hollywood Collectibles Group to print off this flyer saying, thank you for buying the Hollywood Collectibles Group water cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Because I thought, you know, this guy, Alex, has given me all this money and he put his trust in me to get this item insured and get it into transit. Well, it's actually arrived. It's in Perth and it's on its way to him. So, um, Oh, that's good. I'm not 100% relaxed yet because it's not over yet. But um, once it's in his hands, I'll be happy. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> you can only hope, right? Knock on wood, yeah. Fingers crossed. Now, um, has there ever been, um, a, like, a a collection regret that you've purchased and it's not quite what you thought it was going to be? <laughs> you know what one of my answers is going to be straight away. You know what those ridiculous <laughs> socks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ridiculous alien socks. Yeah. Oh, uh, look. <sighs> How much do they cost again? Not rubbing it in or anything, just for the people at home who haven't heard about this $40 drama. $40 <laughs> socks. $40. $40. Is that 40 Australian dollars? It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of embarrassing. That's pretty expensive. For <laughs> Even for socks. Made in China for probably about 10 cents or something. <laughs> yeah. It's a good return on the investment. Yeah. 
um, make sure you keep an eye out for those socks. I've, I've taken a, a range of photos of um, James's collection uh, when I went down to his place to have a look at everything that he's got. And he's got a lot. There's even stuff that we weren't able to fit into the photo. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was a very impressive uh, collection you've got. I, I, have you thought of other ways of like housing it or displaying it? Uh, in my mind, I certainly, I'd, I'd like a bigger house with a, a room that's dedicated for it because I mean, there's other items that I want to buy. There's other items on my list. There's other items I've actually bought since I've seen you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, there is. And um, I'm going to have to come down another weekend, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Give it another year to see what else gets added to the collection, but there will be more, I assure you. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's uh, certainly I'd like to, in my mind, I'd like to get a bigger house with um, a, a decent sized room. It would be a man cave and it would be just, yeah, alien stuff everywhere. So, and I think uh, the other thing I'd like to do is get uh, some display cabinets. So, um, there's some good options available and that's what I want to invest in, some really good display cabinets. Mm, yeah, I definitely want to um, put some of my memorabilia up into like shadow boxes or something on on. Yeah like the wall because like everything's in in boxes packed away and you kind of don't get to have a look at it or touch it or or it doesn't see the light of day and it's kind of sad when that happens yeah. but that's right and then you know as, as a collector that, that's pretty that is very hard too as you saw i mean i've got a lot of stuff packed into a ward a walking robe and you just would never guess what's in there you wouldn't think i'd be able to fit it all in the way i have <laughs> no it's it was like, definitely like like mega tetris or whatever it is that you'd play to be able to get that into the wardrobe <laughs> it's, it's a good effort it's getting yeah. increasingly hard <laughs> now um could you share with i guess other aussie uh, collectors out there where you look for your stuff or where you get your stuff from because not everyone will know the right places to look for alien mm -hmm. things yeah, look, a, a, a tip that I, uh, you know, and I, I do try to, on the Alien Forum now, Alien Collectors Forum, I do try to share things that I've, I've actually shared an item today. You know, remember that ashtray? Mm. The bigger ashtray with the, all the alien heads around it. There's another one that's popped up for £60. So I've actually shared that because I've already bought, bought mine. But uh, what I do is I've found there's a little trick um, on a website called PickClick. Pick click. Is, yeah, okay. it's P-I-C-C-L-I-C-K. Mm -hmm. Now, there's picklick.com.au.com.uk and .de for Germany. So I go to those sites regularly for both my alien items and also my, my other thing, my other obsession, which is boats, you know, mm -hmm. boats and things. And that's how I hunt them down because I find that uh, as a search engine, Picklick is actually better than the search engine facility that's on the eBay websites. Ah. Oh. So there's actually things that pop up sometime on PickClick that you, if you just did a search on ebay.com or .com.au, it won't come up. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it is quite an amazing tool for me where I've actually found a lot of things that I didn't know existed. That's how I found them. That's really cool. Like for me, I go on to um, Pop Culture. Yep. Because that's the main one that most Aussies go to uh, right. to buy stuff online. And then there is, I also, <laughs> I, I occasionally browse through uh, Facebook Marketplace and people laugh at this, but I've actually gotten a lot of good stuff from there. Oh, um, yeah. cool. I, I bought the David 8 uh, Lost Wave Prometheus figure for 50 bucks Australian, which is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I, I bought a repaint for like 120 something dollars. Um, years ago but i wanted a boxed version as well so i managed to find one just recently for 50 bucks the guy just dropped it off to my house and i gave him the money and even better it was very easy that's great yeah there's a my my, sec my secondary line of defense as i say uh obviously ebay itself but then i also yeah, do facebook marketplace and gumtree is another one where i've picked up some real really good rippers i've missed out on a couple but i've picked up a one of the best ones, and you saw it, was the um, Hollywood Collectibles Group Power Loader, the 33-inch one, the big one. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I was really impressed that you got that off Gumtree because sometimes yeah. I feel like that's a bit of a Wild West. You kind of get the runaround from people sometimes. Can be. And it was um, one of those things, too, where I, it was listed on one day because I do a search every week or sometimes multiple times a week. And it was listed that day. 
and he was only in two suburbs away from where I was in, in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. and I called him, I got his number and I said, I'll come and get it. Mm. Because I just knew there was no way I was going to get that thing for 700 Australian dollars, you know, 400 and something US dollars when they're brand new, they're anywhere from 1200 to 1500. So yeah, for sure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, what else do I do? Well, yeah, pop culture is a great site for me. I've been using more and more of that. And it's, it helps when you, you spend some money, then you get the pennies built up, which is good. Yeah. And the other one in Melbourne, which is called Global Gear, sometimes they have some good items too. Global Gear. I don't think Global I've Gear. been to that site. Yeah, they're down in uh, Bayswater. Wow, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Um, I also, like for, for local haunts, I go to places like Zing when things come out new. Um, there's also uh, Minotaur yes, in the Minotaur, CBD. Right? I haven't yeah. been a long time, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to go back there. It's been quite a while since I went to Minotaur. I mean, they've been around a long time. Mm. So how how do you um, meet other alien fans? Like, like apart from me having come over to your place and, and rifle through your stuff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever met other alien fans, like, in and around Australia or in your travels? There's only, there's a couple uh, one night down at your gallery when we have oh. a few nights. Yeah, the screening, yeah. yeah. It's really good. I enjoyed that. And hopefully there'll be more in the future. Uh, you know, I missed out this weekend on going to Comic-Con because I would have liked to have met some of the guys from the Australian Colonial Marine Corps. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw the photos and I was like, I missed out. <laughs> yeah, I missed out too. And uh, I, was just, I was so tired on the weekend and I thought, I've got to drive into the city. I've got to find parking. And, of course, my... Eldest nephew, his partner's just had a baby, so it's all it's sort of like a lot of family time at the minute. It's a yeah. Oh, congratulations! So uh, the, the the baby was still impending when I came and visited, so that's good yeah, that the that's right. babies arrived safely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I definitely want to have um, an RPG night. I think it'd be a lot of fun because we kind of get to step into the roles of the characters we we usually uh, criticise for their decisions in, in the films. <laughs> and I think yeah. playing the RPG kind of gives you a, a different perspective because, like, when, when you're in that universe, things are very different. It is. It is <laughs> cool. And the funny thing is uh, I've got some of the games, but I still remember in high school we would get a group of people together and we would play the Leading Edge Games version of Aliens. And it's, it was always a bit of a laugh because some of the games could go for quite a long time and we wouldn't finish them during our lunch break. But there were some where the aliens just wiped us out, wiped the, the, the slate clean in about 15 minutes, a whole lot of us were wiped out. So it was probably just like the movie. We didn't have, we didn't have any more luck than what the Marines did. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, um, you think you do things differently and, and when you actually get placed in the situation and with the, the limited amount of resources and choices that they have, um, you probably find that you don't survive any better than anyone else. No. But you know, people like uh, Ripley and Shaw and Hicks and you, that all of them were very lucky to survive what they did up to when they did. So I'm on the topic of Hicks and you, could you tell us... <laughs> about your your favorite uh, alien films and your not favorite alien films of it for me the first two were what roped me in and everything after that sort of you know i can, I can appreciate the art and i know of, of what i say to people now is it's very very hard if you're a producer or a director to step into the shoes of ridley scott or james cameron it's a huge ask so uh, the biggest disappointment with Alien 3 for me was killing off Ripley because I think it's a mistake in Hollywood to kill off a, a leading character, someone like Ripley, especially a very strong female character. It's a huge mistake. To my way of thinking, what you're doing is you're killing off the hopes of future directors who might want to be involved in the franchise and might want to take up the gauntlet, you know, take up the, the challenge. And, and run with it and it makes it very hard and I think it's sub so it really made it hard for future alien films when you take away characters like Hicks and Newt and, and Ripley. Mm, yeah and definitely. Newt decided well she Carrie Hen decided she didn't want to act anyway so we can't have her back unfortunately. But. 
but wouldn't it be amazing if if we had had that different sort of like timeline where you know like if they do it these days where they recast actors who do you think you would have play uh newt if Carrie Hen couldn't reprise her role in this theoretical universe where Alien 3 is different. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, it's going to be, an, it's an older newt now. And um, funny thing, thinking about uh, in Alien Resurrection, um, we had Winona Ryder. And, you know, she might have been a good older newt. Mm, yeah, definitely. I can see the re- resemblance in, in that anyway. See, Resurrection for me it was, uh, was a bit of a, a lost hope for me too because I was hoping that, if anything, that Ripley would just wake up in an asylum or something and she's having problems from, um, you know, not just um, post-traumatic stress disorder but also just from extended hyper- issues with extended hypersleep problems and that causing um, psychological trauma. So I was kind of hoping that I just thought it was such a disaster when they killed her off. <laughs> that for me was a disappointment. Yeah, like I, I must admit, uh, Alien Three sits sits somewhere down the bottom in in my ranking of the films. I even rate the prequels higher than Alien Three. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame too because they had they had a good ensemble of actors and actresses there. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, oh, it's a fantastic film. I love it. Like, and the, the dog lines. from Don- Oh yeah, and you've got that um, model as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that was a piece that I got early on in my collecting days and it was already assembled and I had to just re-glue him back onto his base. But I, I, love, the, I love the shape and, yeah, it's a nice piece. Yeah. Um, could you tell us about uh, any collector's pieces that you've gotten which aren't really complete yet and you want to, to get more or to finish it off? Oh, for sure. Look, um, probably only sort of in the last couple of years started getting into the figures, into the box figures. And so there's quite a lot of NECA, NECA items I'm going to, I've got them locked on a watch list on pop culture. They're actually in, in, the, in my cart. <laughs> I've got three items sitting in the cart waiting to go, but I think one of them now is not available till later on. And I, I held back on placing the order because I thought I want them all together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now they're talking about another release with some of the, um, the figures um, from Alien, which looks quite good in actual fact they've got a bloodied um warrior you know the the big chap of the oh yeah ribbon, which looks quite good and um some of the facial features on on um on brett look really good so there's some, definitely might have to buy him yeah i was i was hoping that they kind of let brett um come with the shed skin of the chest burster so you could do poses with him holding it up <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully, you know, that comes along with it. It'll be another accessory pack. They'll have, a, <laughs> have an accessory pack for Alien now. Just Yeah. Yeah, you know, different uh, or actually a really good version of Jones's Jonesy's cage. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I would love that. Things of different sizes, yeah. It was really funny when I was looking at um the little uh the air density detector. Yeah. And you can see the little, like, ice cube tray on the side. That's yeah. pretty funny. It is funny, yeah. Is there um, any uh, particular piece that is kind of, like, loathed or ugly that you have, but you, you kind of love it? Oh, uh, yeah, good question. Um, I, I appreciate all of them, I think, to some extent. There's not one other than the socks, which I think it was just a complete... <laughs> It was just, just so ridiculous that nothing can actually be lower than the socks on the, on the ladder of ridiculousness. But uh, I bought the little scaler. I showed you him. Mm. And I kind of, um, it was one of those things I said, no, I would never get one of those because it's just making a mockery of, you know, making a mockery of this. It's meant to be a science fiction horror. But I saw that and I said, my God, it's too cute to not have it. <laughs> And so they've really roped me in there. So I I don't judge those as harshly as I probably used to. I look at some of these ones down the pop, you know, the pop vinyls and that sort of thing. And I say, look, they've all got their place in in terms of collecting. um, There's such a wide variety of products out there and merchandise. And I think it's great in a way because it's catering to a different taste. Yeah, yeah. What what do you think about the... um Lanard uh, range of toys that they've brought out recently. 
I laughed because I think this just basically it was a subject that hogs at the Alien Collectors Forum for probably close to two weeks. <laughs> and there was this picture and picture and picture of them. And I think, you know, it's not, it's not even really on my list at the minute. Um, yeah, all good and well. I, th- I think it's great. I, I like the colours. That was about the only thing I could say I really liked. The Queen did look good. I did, you know, she had her mouth opened up and everything. And that, it, it really did, does look good but it's not on my list. Yeah, so would you say that you are more interested in things that are detailed or old school or...? Certainly the detailed items are great, yeah. And I think my collection is somewhat eclectic in that I have got I've probably got a little bit of everything without um, some of the things being like complete sets of things. I've, I've picked up bits and pieces where I can and where I can, I prefer to get items that are either new, new in box or with their packaging. And then sometimes I'll pick up some some loose items if they're at a really good price because I figure, well, I can have some on display and I don't need to be too paranoid about wrecking the box or dropping it or, you know, trying to open it and wrecking the packaging, that kind of thing. So Yeah. Um, could you tell us a bit about that amazing uh, wall hanging that we had in the photo? So in, in the background, you've got this, like, beautiful tapestry that's hanging down. It, it took a while to hang up. Um, but you were telling me the story about it. I think you should let our listeners in on, on um, the little adventure that you had with that one. Yeah, and the, my, I'll acknowledge uh, a fellow uh, member of the Alien Collectors Forum on Facebook there. It was Guy Young who put a post up with this, um, this huge rug. And um, he said that he just ordered this thing and it actually, in the p- picture that he put up, it had a little bit.ly uh, web address, a URL, and uh, because of the time difference with the United States, he didn't respond straight away to my messages. And I'm being so impatient. I thought, I've got to find this thing. I've just got to find it and see if I can buy it. Because it, was, it seemed pretty cheap. And then I noticed in the picture there was that bit.ly URL. So I typed that in and I was able to go online and buy it straight away. And of course, I'm like this. I'm thinking, oh, I did it. And I didn't need anyone else. I just found the thing. So I had a little mini celebration. And then... <clears throat> after I actually settled down, I thought to myself, what the hell have I just done? I don't even know who these people are. I'd never heard of this, this business or this website prior to this, seeing this item. And suddenly I actually started to panic because I thought, oh my God, have I been scammed? So I started to Google, Google this company. I can't remember the name, but Needless to say, there were Google references to scam and scam watch and all this sort of thing. And by now, I just I, was, I thought, my God, it's too late. So another uh, relay of messages went to Guy Young. And I said, mate, I think we've been scammed. And uh, so for the, about the next week and a half, we were in constant communication, worrying as to whether we would get this item because we send messages to the company which wouldn't be responded to, or in some cases, if you're lucky, you'd get a response after two or three days. But <laughs> one of the first, <clears throat> one of the initial responses I received from the company when they did correspond to me was from some individual who had a name, it was a strange name, and it didn't sound like this item was coming from America because the website made out that it would be posted from America. It was a really strange name. So I Googled this name. And it was the name of a Japanese anime character. (laughs) I thought, my God, how much of a scam is this? They're even making fun of me by using some character. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I thought I'd really been taken for a ride. But um, it got to the stage where I I did open up a case in PayPal because I wasn't getting responses. I was, by this stage, I was really panicking. I think it got to about, was it two and a half, three three or maybe four weeks or something before this thing actually did arrive. So I was at the point where I'd opened up a case in PayPal, expecting I just thought they've scammed me. I'm going to have to try and get a a refund. And then uh, I'm trying to think, I think I'm pretty sure Guy Young actually received his first. So that probably alleviated a little bit for me to just give him a bit more time. And sure enough, the thing did arrive. And when it did, it's, as you say, it's, it's quite beautiful for what it is. Yeah, I it's think. amazing. And it's, a, it's really big. <laughs> it is big, yeah. 
And there's actually, uh, I think that was the, the large, and I think they had like another, uh, an extra large, maybe even double extra large of that. So and that, the one that, I, that you see there is six foot by four, I think. Mm. And then I think they had um, an, an eight by five and all. They had some other monstrous size. It was Wow. You know, I can't imagine it getting any bigger than that, really. <laughs> well, I, I went by the six by four because as, as you can see, when you come down, I didn't have much space left. So. <laughs> no, that'll take up an entire wall. You'll have to take down some artwork, I think. No, I will, but it'll be worthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, has, has there anything... Uh, has there been anything that you've really enjoyed in like, because you said that the first two films were your favorites and, and nothing's really measured up since then. Has there been anything that has come out that you've thought, actually, this is actually quite good. I think some of the, uh, the short movies that have come out, I've, I've enjoyed those. I think it's, um, I'd love to see more fan based movies where they can get the funding you know to to come up with their own ideas and you know even if it'd be great if one day someone ran with the idea of resurrecting ripley and having her start in an asylum and hicks and become the rescuer from the company people who are going to try and really finish her off it, i would love to see more of these ideas come out and that the fans actually are the ones who instigate it yeah uh, definitely if, if it helps hollywood along a little bit uh you know, it's very, very hard, I think, because we've come so far with the franchise to keep coming up with novel and unique ways of, of keeping it fresh. And um, in the name of making, getting a return on the investment, it can be pretty hard sometimes when they're going to spend and invest the years that they have to, to develop the, the scripts and the storylines before they even start searching factors. So it's, it's a hard ask. I know it is. And it's getting harder because of the amount of money it takes to make movies now. Mm, yeah, and definitely the effect of coronavirus affecting box office numbers with second releases being put off, like even like James Bond's movie. Yeah, they like, haven't had to fuck with that. No, <laughs> no time to die. <laughs> yeah, they probably No time to make money just, either. <laughs> no, it just changed the name completely because it's been set back after set back for them producing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if um if you could get a job in in Disney or Fox yeah. uh to help the franchise, what, what job would you you go for or choose? What what do you think you'd be best suited for? If I had my time again, I would love to have been involved in prop prop construction. Uh, I mean not I think even in the time prior to I can tell you now, my first movie that really got me hooked, the first movie that I've sort of become obsessed with was Ghostbusters. And as I actually saw that as a little kid when it came out in 1984, so I would have been eight years old. And I straight away went home and started making the proton pack and the particle thrower. I built my own. And then when the video came out a year or so later, I got it and I used to freeze frame it. I actually watched Ghostbusters probably 300 times, freeze framed it every weekend so I could sit there with that picture of the proton pack on the, on the magazine, trying to draw it out so I could go and build a more accurate proton pack. <laughs> That's amazing. Take it, granted, take it for granted now because they, they they sell those things and you can buy them and import them from America. So, <laughs> yeah, we've oh got man, I, I love um, Ghostbusters as well. We'll have to have a, a movie night for that as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's the other movie that I, I do have a few pieces. Not many. I, I didn't really want to get into collecting Ghostbusters stuff as well. I don't have room. <laughs> But uh, there was a few pieces that I've got there, a couple of um, Mattel, Maddie, Maddie collector or Mattel collector's items uh, and some original stuff that I probably bought, you know, in 84 or 80. Oh, no, it wouldn't have been that early because I didn't have any money back then. But uh, when I started saving coin, when I started getting my you know, money, um, what did I buy there? A couple of books and the record and few little bits and pieces, probably some figurines, but I think I've lost anyway. I think I've lost the figures. So. Oh, no. <laughs> but it probably did start the bug. And I think it also started the fascination for me of, of movie props because then we, you know, at a, it was probably a slightly later stage, watched the Star Wars films, the first films there. And there's so much with Star Wars that really captured, captures your imagination. And just looking at the, the equipment that they created again, like the Millennium Falcon and the AT-AT walkers and the Scout walkers and all these things that you say, oh, geez, how did they build that? Yeah. 
Would you spot. would you travel all the way to Disneyland to go to Galaxy's Edge and and have a look at all that sort of stuff? Oh, oh for sure. I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, I would love it. I wish there was an alien version of that. Like I know they they kind of planned to have a fun park in Malaysia um, that was alien themed, but it was more like a theme park with alien stickers on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. It's, it's pretty hard because uh, they would need to have a theme park that caters for all the, the, the movies, you know. It's not just one or two or one franchise. Mm. But uh, you know, I'd love to, even if I was in, in England at some point, go over to meet the guys at Bakti and Co who worked on creating the weapons for aliens. And oh, that would be cool. That would be very cool because those guys have got a lot of knowledge. <laughs> Is there anyone um, in... Uh, the alien films or in, in like creatives in the alien universe that you would like to meet apart from them? <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty much anyone and, and anyone I could from <laughs> uh, alien. I mean, it would be great at a, at a comic con. I'd love to go to a comic con in, in the States and meet some of these people before we, we lose them because we're, especially from the first film, they're, they're all getting on now and they're not going to be with us. We're not around forever. So it would be nice to actually meet some of them and, yeah say hi so yeah definitely it's it's on my bucket list but <laughs> i'm afraid i won't have enough money in time yeah no i think the closest I, I might get at the moment is being able to pay um i can get on and you can actually get michael bean to um do a, a short video for you and, oh really yeah yeah he's actually he'll do something for you know two or three minutes or five minutes regardless depending on what you want to buy and so i was actually going to get him my idea was to get him to do something for the alien collectors forum on facebook and oh wow uh, yeah well i look forward to seeing that if that ever happens <laughs> it yeah, sounds sure. like a lot of fun yeah <laughs> all right well i think that's all that we've got time for today thank you so much james for joining us for our uh, alien day uh, special video cast slash podcast uh, is there anything else you'd like to say uh to all of our listeners out there keep collecting <laughs> For sure. All right. So this is Mother signing off for now. Thank you very much for having me, Clara. See you later. Good morning. See ya.